happy? Happy? Um, like Jeremy said, uh, I've run into him a few times around the way. I haven't taken it in him yet. It will happen one of these times. Um, and just well, the other day, he asked me if I wanted to come in and talk about posing, which I find amazing that people want to actually hear what I have to say, because I don't have much to say. But um, we'll talk a little bit about posing. Um, if you don't know my company, it's Velvet Images Photography. Uh, the name comes from actually my sister. When I was trying to figure out a name for my company, I was like, well, what do I call it? Do I call it Vel Smith? Do I call it Beautiful Productions? She's like, just call it Velvet. It worked. Um, she said that my images have a sense of feel to them. And just like Velvet, she says they're soft and luxur luxurious, all those nice things sisters are supposed to say. Anyway, so today let's talk about posing. First off, why do we shoot? And by the way, I don't know all of you, but the, do, the ones I do know, you're victims, okay? Because I know your names. Like Leah, I'm gonna get you a lot. No. Leah's my, one of my second shooters, by the way. Um, so exactly, let's find out. Why do we shoot? Why do we shoot? Trey, why do we shoot? Uh, for stress relief. Okay. I'm a college student. Mine goes way up when I shoot, so. <laughs> kind of like right now, I'm stressing out a little bit. Stress relief, anybody else? Money. We love that. Tell stories. Storytelling. It's good. Create. You have to tell me your name again. I'm Pete. That's right. I know you. Winner. Pete Hanson. I have no money. <laughs> I got an iPhone. Uh, Sean, you can't hide. You're the biggest guy in here. I shoot for money and for passion. Passion. I shoot for different reasons. It depends on the day. The reason I shoot is growing up, I always saw my grandfather shoot. And he had a Minolta at the time. And I didn't know why he was always so angry when I touched it. It was just a box with a bunch of dials on it and it didn't make any sense, but I raised it to my eye and I see a little cool little circle in it and then one day I stole it. <laughs> and, <laughs> if you ever met my grandfather, he's the type of little words but a lot of action. He found me huddled up with his little Minolta and he proceeded to give me a circle whooping. Anybody from the South? Anybody from the South? You know what a whooping is? Okay, I experienced a whooping. And a circle whooping is when you go to run and your grandfather or your dad grabs you and he spanks you while you're running in a circle. <laughs> Left an impression on me. And from then on, I said, one day, I want to own a camera. So, everyone has a certain style when they shoot. And what we're going to talk about today is refining our style. We're going to go through my style and my photographic formula. We're going to talk about evoking emotion through posing. I'm a great poser. Um, some of the pitfalls we run into in, in uh, posing and also some execution of those poses that we learn. First off, style. This is one of my favorite quotes. It's about writing, but I apply it to my Photography. It's, it's, it's better to, have, to write for self and have no public than to write for the public and have no self. When I first got into photography, I didn't know anything about it. I just knew it was a pretty box, it cost a lot of money, and my friends made fun of me. But over time, I developed a sense of style, of how I looked at things, how I felt when I took a picture. And I, and, and I would borrow things from various photographers because in reality, nothing in photography is new. We've all learned it somewhere else. So as we go into learning things, we put things in what cops call a tool belt. So we learn something, we put it in our belt. Now we don't have to use it, but it's something that we know that's familiar, we can get, pick it up whenever we need it. So I look at David Terry, he has a style. I like some of his, I put it in my pocket. I look at Leah, the way she shoots, I put it in my pocket. And that all, what defines my belt is my style. And when I shoot, I don't shoot for anybody else. I shoot for me. I shoot for stress relief. I shoot for money, sometimes. <laughs> And that's my enjoyment in it. And what's kind of unique is none of us should be shooting for anyone next to us. We should be shooting for ourselves. In that, we'll find uniqueness. And what's in that uniqueness is individuality. First off, the camera. This is our pen, or how we write, or how we tell stories. Who here shoots Canon? Nikons? 
Anything else, Sony? Yeah, it's my buddies back there. <laughs> Everybody in the corner, I guess you know I use Sony now. <laughs> uh, in reality, the camera, it's not important. Anything else? What'd you shoot? iPhone. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Expensive, though. <laughs> like, really? Really? No, I have a D. What's your name? Rachel. I'm going to write you down, too. Rachel. Okay. <laughs> All right, the camera. What the camera does, it's our best friend and it's our worst enemy. If we don't know the camera, we hate it. We, we have this picture in our mind as artists, but we can't seem to get it out because this stupid camera won't let us do it. So we go from Canon to Nikon, from Nikon to Sony, and all a big circle. But in reality, any camera we shoot today, including the iPhone, is better than any camera that Ansel Adams shot with. And he created memorable images that we'll never be able to duplicate. So the camera is just a tool. It's an annoying tool, or it could be our best friend. What it also does, you heard the term that the camera adds weight? It does, period. Because it's a dumb object, and all it does is it wants to do what it does wants to do. So we have to work with it, we have to fool it. And once we become master of that camera, then we can refine our style. Um, one of the things the camera does is, it, the first thing it seems to contact, it wants to make larger. You stick your head close to the camera, it's going to make it bigger. Our eyes do the same thing. If I hold my fist out, my fist looks bigger than my face, but in reality, it's smaller. It's just the way the camera works and the way our eye works. But as all these expensive cameras we have, I have never seen one come bundled with creativity. Ever. I think the most expensive camera I've actually held was a Hasselblad something, something that had so many zeros on it, I thought it was my social security number. And, I, it, was, and it had no creativity came with it. Rachel with her iPhone could outshoot it if she's creative, correct? With this creativity, we get individuality. We get a sense of uniqueness. So inside of us, there's one thing on this planet there's no duplicate of, and that's ourselves. If we look at ourselves for our own sense of style and we shoot what we love, guess what? The person next to us can't shoot it. I love David Terry's work. Can't shoot it. He has a sense of unique style that's his own that I can't duplicate. So when someone comes to me and says, hey, can you shoot like David Terry? I could try. It's like grandma's apple pie. Nobody can duplicate grandma's apple pie except for grandma. You have to take that within yourself and accept that. Just because this person might be selling more, don't give up your sense of self. Uniqueness will get you sold because there's only one of you in this world. Stick to your style. So question, what is an image? I'm gonna pick on you, Glenn. What is an image? Painting. Painting? By the way, there's no wrong answers, just so you know. That was a really <laughs> wrong answer. <laughs> Jen, what is an image? A memory. Okay. Anybody else? It's a moment of time. Moment of time. So the camera's like a time machine. Pretty cool, huh? Jen? What's that? A visual story. A visual story. A visual story. We're going to hit that. Love that. Visual story. Anybody else? Capture of light. It's a capture of light. What I'm loving about, go ahead. Oh, I'm, I'm going to start you up and you're going to keep talking and keep talking and keep talking, right? I said painting because photography means painting with light. Okay. Very good. So we get two types of answers. We get a, an emotional answer, capture of time, picture, and we get a technical answer. It is capture of light. It is painting with light. Technical answers. Both of them will give us an answer what an image is. So the next question is, what is a good image? Pete? It's up to the beholder. Good answer. Anybody else? It evokes emotion. Evokes emotion. You're just being a teacher's pet. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? What is a good image? It's one you like. I'm sorry? It's one you like. It's one, one you like. like. In that case, I have never shot a good image. I hate everything I shoot. <laughs> Honest truth, I'm my own worst critic. I have not liked one image I've ever shot. It's when your client or someone else says, ooh, that's very really good. Okay, so it's a pat on the back, yeah. right? Okay. A good image to me, We'll do two things, it's like a great song. 
It will visually stimulate me and it will emotionally move me. Whenever I look at a good image, I, I don't know exactly why it's good, but I have an emotional response to it. I look at it and I feel sad, or I look at it and I feel happy, or I look at it and I feel wanting to be there. How many times have you seen a picture of the Maldives and we're like, yes, let's go? You know what I'm saying? It, it's that emotional response. So to me, a good image will visually stimulate me and emotionally move me. I've seen good images from everybody in here. So we come down to it, the tool belt. I learned photography by looking at photography. I learned photography by listening to photography. I learned photography by just walking outside and find out what makes me feel good. Those things I put in my belt. So how do we develop our style? Any ideas? I got candy for you. <laughs> That's exactly practice. What else? Shooting what we like. Anybody in here have a second job? <laughs> Who here is a strict photographer only? Feel bad for you? Uh, I feel bad for you. You didn't raise your hand, but I know better. Okay, I feel bad for you. Who else? Anybody else a strict photographer only? Okay, you guys know my second job. I am grateful for my second job because for what Dave said, I get to shoot what I want. I don't have to shoot to feed my kids. I don't have to shoot to pay my house mortgage. I don't have to shoot to keep the bill collectors away. I shoot because it's what I love to do. And I'm a wedding photographer. So most of my stuff today will be geared towards wedding photography. Sorry guys, sorry the baby shooters and the maternity, ugh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I can't help you. <laughs> but, but basically, I am grateful for my primary job because now photography is my love. I have a job to feed my kids. I have a passion that feeds my passion. So, professional versus amateur. What's the difference? Come on, spit it out. What? How well you hide your mistakes. You don't get to talk anymore. Okay. <laughs> paid or not? Anybody else? How you present yourself. Anybody else? How you think of yourself. How you think of yourself. Consistency. Consistency. Yeah. I've seen some pros who suck. And I've seen some amateurs who are amazing. What's the difference between pro and amateur? It's what you decide. What you decide you're going to be. Whatever your vision of what professional is, that's what you need to strive to. If you love to be an amateur, I've seen amateurs get paid. I've seen amateurs get paid lots of money but they love their passion. They embrace their passion. So in a sense, they're kind of a pro. Okay, borrow but don't steal. This one I see quite often. Uh, if you ever spend time on Facebook, you'll see the unfortunate souls who happen to steal an image from someone else and they are found out. And you see how we turn into these ravenous sharks and we destroy this person's life, their kids, their job, their life, everything. We are very, very protective of ourselves with the camera. Learn from the person next to you. Borrow what they have. Don't steal it. Save your bad images. How many people do that? I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I save every bad image I have. Leah, who tries to impress me all the time on, on when she's my second shooter, will delete her bad images from the camera. And I promptly pull her to her corner and I yell at her. And then she yells back and then I go to my corner. <laughs> but save your bad images. Those are your mistakes. If you just save your highlight film, you will never learn what you need to improve on. It's a slow process. It's a very slow process if you delete your bad images. Save them, put them in a special folder. When you are done doing your shoot, go back to your bad images and say, this is how I messed up, that's how I messed up. It would be a world, world of good for you to save those. Practice versus perform. Um, if anyone's ever second shot with me, I think Jen has, and of course Leah has. Um, one thing I always repeat, if you come to my shoot, you are not there to practice. You are not there 
to learn. Sean, you shout at me too. Sorry, man. I forgot you. You are there to perform. I equate everything to football because I love football. During the week, you run through plays. You condition. You listen to the coach. You go to meetings. You practice. So on game day, it's your A game. You're, being a wedding photographer, these are people's memories. You can't turn to me and say, oh, Phil, I, I, I missed that shot because I was underexposed. No, it doesn't work. You still got that done during the week. So anything technique you want to learn new, practice at home. Who do we practice with? Practice makes perfect. I've heard you, I know you've heard that term many times. I'm going to refine a little bit. Perfect practice makes perfect. Meaning when you go home and you practice off-camera flash, which is a huge no-no to me. I hate it. Anybody else hate it? Someone raise your hand, please. I'm not the only one. Thank you. Okay. Off-camera flash is the bane of me. I will never practice it on a wedding. I will practice it at home. I will practice it after my shoot. I'll practice it before my shoot. That's when we practice. So you practice perfectly. Find someone who knows it, what you're trying to learn. Have them get in your ear. That'll help you. Perfect practice. So who we practice with? Models, objects, living slaves. We all have living slaves. Those are the kids, right? Because you know what? They got to do what we say because we feed them. If we don't feed them, well, they'll come back anyway, right? <laughs> because they, they're our kids. So my kids, um, I was going to post pictures of them, but I couldn't find a good one because they can't keep a straight face in any of them. Um, people who know my kids know. Y'all want some kids? They're black. I hope that was about it. Okay. I've never shot a model in my life. Um, I think I've shot one, and I made her look fat, and she yelled at me. So that was when I first started. Ever since then, I've shot a model. I, I shoot people, because that's who my clients are. The better I can shoot us, the better I can do my job. Models are already perfect. They're already beautiful. They're already skinny. They're already in the prima donnas. And there's models in here, I'm sorry. No, I'm not really, but y'all know. Okay. Objects. A good way to learn posing, believe it or not, is with objects. Something round. Imagine you get someone who has a rounder face. How can we give them contour? How can we give them shape? And of course, the living slaves. So, this is something I used to, I've actually, this is another tool I've learned. This is the practice wheel evolution. What you do during the week is you push yourself. Something new, let's say you want to, Start practicing evoking joy in an image. Okay, so you'll push yourself and you're gonna fail a ton. A ton, but the failing's good. Because from the failing we learn. And when we learn from failing, we evolve. And then our skill set gets bigger. And it's a constant thing. I don't know anyone who is successful in photography that does not do this. This is a constant. And the more you do this, the larger your skill set gets. So, let's talk about my style. My style. Most everything I have learned in photography, believe it or not, I have learned from law enforcement. I've been a law enforcement officer for almost 17 years. And one thing that we learn in law enforcement is the language not spoken. Things not said will get you killed. Things said will divert you. So, me and most of my guys in my crew, we have learned body language. That is the basis of my posing, the base of evoking emotion. So, my photographic formula has five parts. Everybody knows the first and most important thing is light. If we don't have light, we don't have anything. If we don't have light, we don't have shadow. Light. Somebody tell me what light is to them. Don't make pick on you. Paint. Paint. What else? Okay. True. What else? I'm going to start poking at you. There you go. It reveals. Man, that's real deep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did you co sign on that? Is he? No? <laughs> uh, you're in trouble now, Dave. Okay. <laughs> Light is the stage of everything. Depending on the light we have, detects the mood we have in the room, or the mood we have in our image. If we take an image, 
And we, actually I'll just get into that later. Next is location. Where are we shooting at? Is it outside, is it inside? Is there some kind of structure? Things of that nature. The next thing I have is my technique. Am I gonna shoot shallow? Am I shoot long lens, short lens? Am I gonna shoot uh, fast shutter speed, slow shutter speed, off camera flash, whatever. Next one is the pose. This is when our people come in. Or object, because you can pose objects. And the difference between a pose and a, oh, come on, work with me. Okay, the moment. That takes us from a regular just standing there to emotion, is the moment. That is the difference between just standing there and somebody crying, okay? So we'll touch these one by one. First, light. Well, you, these are all images from recent weddings this year. Sorry if you want to see an older one. Um, light. Light is the mood setter. If we have bright lights, lots of color, we tend to see that and get a sense of joy. Darker mood light gives a sense of mystery, sense of wonder. I'm a big fan of the darker light. <laughs> so this gentleman on the left came to me and said, hey, Vel, I used to shoot a lot of groomsmen, like a big group of groomsmen. He's, he was only one. He says, I want to look like the Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> so I dialed back my memory of that cover, and I set the light. Now imagine if that would have been bright lights, the mood's gone. Uh, Ashley here on the right, she says she wanted a kind of a mysterious type of maiden type of look. You guys all probably know that's at Thanksgiving point. That's why you side lighting. Light sets the mood. Hey Marlo, if we move you over here, we can turn off those lights so we can see that. Okay. Pete, which one is that? Three. Why did I just kill this? Why did it just kill on me? Why did that kill on me? I don't know why. Your Wi-Fi, pay the bill. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So the next thing I said is location. You can pose a location. One of the things I hear all the time is, well, I don't know any nice place to shoot. You can shoot in a cardboard box if you have light. You just have to find the location. And every location we walk into, it gives us certain things that we can do with it. It gives us patterns, it gives us shapes, it, it gives us different types of lines, it gives us different types of framing. But one thing I really like to touch on is I tell people visual mass. You ever heard that term before? Mass itself is the, the weight something holds, correct? Visual mass is built the same thing. When we look at an image, what holds our visual mass? What holds our attention? The key is simplicity. BBF. Our subject should be the biggest. If it's not the biggest, it should be the brightest. If it can't be the brightest, it has to be the most in focus. If it can be all three, it's perfect. The background must make sense because the last thing I like to do is look at an image I'm going, what am I looking at? Where am I supposed to be? Because somebody's wearing a tree hat or somebody's got something sticking out of their back and all I want to do is laugh and think of bad jokes that cops do. And the, so the background must make sense. The next come down is our composition. Our composition is our arrangement of elements in our frame, correct? So part of our conference, we have frames to help us our, our subject stick out. And lines. So these are all things that we see when we roll into locations. Look for reflections, we can look for patterns, we can look for frames, we can look for lines, it, anywhere. I mean, just looking in here, we can find patterns and find lines. Right. And one of the biggest things ever is adding and subtracting. For me and my, my style, if something does not add to my subject, it's taken away from my subject, plain and simple. If it's not helping tell my story, it's cutting my story away. It's confusing my viewer so that I will eliminate it. And that doesn't always have to be through Photoshop. By the way, I hate Photoshop, hate it. To this day, I have never Photoshopped one person. Everyone is beautiful, and I'm a firm believer in that. 
If you have to Photoshop someone, it's because you shot them wrong. And that's what I believe. It means so much more when you hand someone an image and say, hey, and they start crying, and like, wow, I'm beautiful. I'm like, yeah, and I didn't have to fix you. It means a lot, you know? Okay. Next part of my photographic formula is my technique. Uh, uniquely, uh, I'm a big fan of the long lens. Um, those of you guys who are techies in here and I use the word compression, please don't stab me. Okay? It exists. It's real. You just go with it. Okay. Uh, let me go back to this one real quick. Uh, this image on the right was shot at 70 millimeters on my 7200. That was shot at 200 millimeters on my 7200. I didn't move. Notice how the building behind becomes bigger. Compression. Don't shoot me. Okay. Know your gear. First thing I do when I look at it, I have an idea in my head is I reach for my lens. What lens do I want? Know what lens does for you. This was shot with a 16 millimeter fisheye. I knew it was going to do that. I saw the strong lines above, the strong lines below. I knew when I put that fisheye on it, it would create kind of a circle and kind of frame her. And it wouldn't touch her. Okay, distortion. Many times I look at an image and I see people shooting <coughs> a portrait at 24 millimeters. What does that do? It makes my kids happy because you look like cartoons. Okay, it makes your head big, makes your eyes big. So that first, remember that the first thing that that lens is gonna touch is gonna make, it's gonna make larger. Granted, if I stand like this, it's gonna make my hip bigger before it touches anything else. I put my foot and make my foot bigger. Follow me, you tracking me what I'm saying? Okay. And then that naughty word, compression. Now this photographer, I forgot his name, but I love his website. And this is one of my favorite things I've ever seen to explain focal length when shooting portraits. All right, now he went through different focal lengths, but he kept the model about the same size in the frame. My favorite lens I use is the 135 1.8. Only Sony shooters have that. Zeiss class. Am I right? Okay. Um, now we can see what happens at 19 millimeters versus 35 millimeters versus 350. Just the stark difference between the two. So again, what is a good image? If you can light right, I was just talking to Glenn earlier, you can put the best lighting and then your ratios are all correct and then your, your subject or your, your client gets the image and says, I look fat. Okay, we forget sometimes. For portrait shooters, our goal is to make our, port, our subjects look good. They're not gonna care about our lighting, they're not gonna care what lenses we use, they don't even care if they look good or not. So again, my favorite focal length is the 135. I'll occasionally shoot at, 70, at, at 200 millimeters, but most of my images are at 135. Sometimes 85 millimeters, that's not represented. Okay, compression, that naughty <coughs> word. Okay. This was shot at 70 millimeters at 2.8. Look at the red box. Now I didn't move her. Look how much bigger the, blue, the box got. I know at 200 millimeters, the compression, stay with me, is gonna do that. So if you know your lens, you know before you even pick it up, okay, I see that, that red box back there. I wanna bring it a little bit closer. I want her to flatter her, so I'm gonna shoot at 200 millimeters, and I know I'm gonna bring a little bit of color in with that bench. Never move the bench, just change the focal length. Okay, now my bread and butter, the pose. What is a pose? I don't know your name. Their I'm Brecca. Hi, Brecca. <laughs> it's their position. Their position, okay. Guided position. Guided position? Anybody else, Glenn? Interaction with each other, okay. What else? What is a pose to you? There's no bad, there's no wrong answers here. Body style. Body style. Okay, I'm gonna start poking people because I appreciate you speaking up, but I don't know your name, but I'm gonna start poking at you, okay? <laughs> oh, who's the next victim? Oh no, you're like God, man. I'm not even asking you. <laughs> uh, let me see, who am I gonna pick on? What's your name? Oh yeah. What? Kara. Kara. What's a pose? See, I should have picked on you earlier. <laughs> this is exactly what a pose is to me. Pose is a language for me. 
Remember, everything I learned in photography as far as people, I learned through body language. I've learned that by watching someone's hands, if they're a threat or not. I've learned by watching people the way they stand, if they're going to run. I've learned by just watching people's eyes, if they're plotting on me or not. It's the truth. You're plotting on me. Okay. So, like I said, it's a language. So why do we pose? Two reasons. We want to make our subjects look the best possible they can, because those are the people feeding our passion, correct? They're the one calling us up and saying, hey, we want you to shoot us. Sounds funny. <laughs> we also pose because we, I pose because I like to tell a story. All my poses, I want people to look at and say, what's the story? But in posing, we run into pitfalls, very big pitfalls that I see quite often. And we're gonna touch on some of those in a minute. So like I said, it's about <laughs> storytelling. And it's about creating or evoking that emotion. If you pose well, if you pose, remember posing is like language. A pose, we can communicate, oh, she likes him. That's speaking in complete sentences. So if every body part or every way they stand is a one word, and if I put someone here and I pose them up, and they're like, oh, those two love each other. The difference between speaking in complete sentences and speaking in poetry with your posing is now instead of people saying, oh, he loves each other, they love each other, they're saying they can't be without each other. They were meant for each other. This is th that, that emotional response we get. So the goal is to pose with poetry. So my language, body language is the first language we learn as humans, is it not? I remember when I first became a dad, I was playing PlayStation, and there was this kid that just kept crying and crying and crying, and I'm like, someone needs to shut that kid up. And I realized, oh, that's my son. <laughs> so that's the first time I remembered, uh, when I first realized that body language, all he can do is cry. I can understand what he's saying, he doesn't speak English. As much as I want him to, he will not speak English to me. I have to look at him and know what he wants by just by the way he's moving. How many times have you picked up a kid and he did not want to be picked up? What's the first thing he did? Threw that head away. What is that telling you? Watch out, because it's coming back, right? <laughs> <laughs> Does not want to be touched. Body language is the first language we learn as humans. But as we go throughout life, we forget it. And we start to focus on spoken word. We are artists. We don't have the luxury of spoken word. We speak through body language and light. So, to read body language, you must be able to read it to be able to imply it. And to imply it in posing. So if someone throws up a fist at you, that usually means they want to hit you. If someone puts a hand out to you, it means stay away. If someone shows you the back of their hand, that means come with. Unless it's like this, then it means you owe money, right? <laughs> okay. So, that's how we read posing, or read body language. Cues, there are certain cues or words that I use when I pose. The head, the head, number one. The head will tell me. I go to movie theater, I can tell who's the couples, because they sit down and they put their heads next to each other. Do we not see that all the time? I'm seeing it here. If someone doesn't smell right, they move the head away. <laughs> the head is a definite, definite cue of who we are affectionate with. The hands. The hands are our greatest enemy and also our greatest friend. Our hand will send the message that we want to portray. A hand around the back means come. A hand on the chest means away. Okay. How many times have we seen images with a bride's hand flat against the, her groom's chest? Right? Get away. That's what our body sees. Our, our brain tells us. Eyes. This is the one thing that I think most photographers forget. How many times have I seen, come here, stand here, sit next to me, close your eyes? Awkward. Right? Okay. The eyes will like to dictate what everything else wants to do. 
Many times I've rolled up on someone and I'm talking to them and all of a sudden their eyes are doing this. Oh, either someone's coming up behind me or he's thinking about going. But it lets me know that something's happening. With the verb, the, the nonverbal cues are telling me. We're gonna apply this into our posing. The mouth. The mouth is one of the last things or cues that you can get. The mouth is the difference between a happy haha -ha and I'm gonna mess you up. <laughs> Pretty much. If someone's showing their teeth at you, that's one of the, the one of the things we learned at the very beginning. Bearing teeth is an attack. An open mouth is inviting. Odd, but true. Okay. <laughs> Don't. Okay. <laughs> All right. And the last part is how we're standing. If someone is standing, blade it off. They could be getting ready for an attack. They could be getting ready for a hug. They could be getting ready for many different things. The stance is the last thing I will actually use when posing. Believe it, it's the first thing, but it's also the last thing. Okay, so I have eight basic starts that I do. These things, I break, these are my kind of rules, but I break them all the time. All the time I break them. Okay. So what I do is I will actually start with these is when I pose. Every pose I've ever done will be linked to one of these. They will be facing each other. They will be one in front, one in back. It'll be either him behind or her behind. They'll be walking, sitting. There'll be a disc between them or there'll be a T pose, which is my absolute favorite. That is basically when one is standing here and the other is standing dead middle chest, facing this way. So one's facing this way, one's facing this way. Love that pose. Okay, rules. <laughs> Absolutely 100% are made to be broken. Learn them before you break them. Okay, now we'll go through this a little bit about stance. As we know, stance starts at the feet. Um, one of the pitfalls I see is people will stand with a slouched spine. That is an automatic cue. I don't know whoever does that. I mean, women do it a lot. Men seem to slouch back and women seem to slouch forward. I don't know why. Do you know why, Jen? I don't know, because you're doing it right now, so I'm just wondering. Well, okay. <laughs> I've seen women 4'11 do it, and I can see the top of their head, so I know they're short. Okay, no 90 degree angles, meaning if we will tend, okay, whenever I pose a woman, and I know you've seen this sometime in poses, you will actually see the woman's hand or arm at a 90 degree angle. Whenever we try to open a jar, what do we do? We bring everything inside right here, and we twist it because we know our strength is in here. A 90 degree angle to our brain tells us strength. Guys can pull it off, women usually can't. But usually when we go 90 degree and we shoot camera side over here, the first thing that camera sees is what? How many women in here love the size of their arms? <laughs> no. Yeah. What do guys do when they want to make it look stronger? They'll go like this and they're like, eh? Okay. Taking your arm and pressing against your body will make your arm wider. Remember the camera loves that. Oh, I see you, I'm gonna make you fat. Okay, we will avoid that. So what we do with women, we try and everything with a woman, we want to bend. We want to bend her arm to a, a 45 degree here or bring it up here. But if we bring it up here, we have to turn because the camera will see that and show muscle and they don't like that. Okay, legs, same thing. I see this all the time with groom. The groom's standing straight up like soldiers. You seen this? Go through your imagery, you will see it. For some reason, men think when they get their picture taken, they have to stand like this or they have to fold their arm and if they're a black dude, they gotta put their head up. <laughs> I don't get it. Okay, so what we do with legs, we have to bend the legs somewhat. The front knee, we want to bend with the men. Slight bend. That's all it takes. And the camera says, oh, okay, and it loves it. Collarbones. Whenever we shoot women, and we shoot them with a straight across tri uh, collarbone, we are making them wide. Period. I don't know any woman here who wants to be wide. So you have to get the collarbones off that degree angle and just turn them slightly. Remember, there's a test. We'll be doing this later, and I'll be laughing at you as you do this. Okay. Also, the same thing. When we are getting that, up, that collarbone off our angle, we are bringing the arms off the body. To make it look natural, we have to give a reason for that to happen. Usually, it's a holding a veil or holding a dress or reaching out for something or holding flowers up. But at the same time, we do not want the arms next because now we've made her this wide. We need a gap between the body and the arm. Okay. And I already covered the bent knee. 
These are my core elements, things I will never do, never stray from. Rarely ever break them. The mouth. It holds tension. I recently shot a wedding. It was, how cold was it? Six? Six degrees? Shot that wedding with McKenzie? The whole day, McKenzie walked around like this. She looked cold. And so as I start to take her picture, I'm like, hey, McKenzie, breathe through your mouth a little bit. And the moment she breathed through her mouth, the cold left. Odd. Okay, it holds tension. We want to encourage breathing. Some people, when they start to get in front of a camera, they stress out and they stop breathing. And their mouth goes tense and then they turn blue. And you white people, you change color on me all the time. <laughs> I've never seen a brother change color on me. But man, y'all got to change color on me all the time. It's good because I know you're cold. Okay. And it's also a source of emotion, like I stated earlier. Smiles, bearing teeth, open mouth, these all invite emotion. The hands, no creepy hands. <laughs> Y'all know what the creepy hand is, right? Yes. How many times have you seen someone reach around, and I'm posing this big group, and I see a hand. <laughs> and I'm like, whose hand is that? So, no creepy hands. Now, creepy hands come in all different shapes and forms. They could be full in the pocket. That's a creepy hand. Looks like there's no hand there. Especially if it's a black suit. Then you're not going to see the hand. Many times when we go to, to actually put our arm around someone, we'll just see the hand come over. But we don't see the origin. And I've seen the scary movie that involved. Okay? <laughs> Gotta see the wrist. No creepy hands. No flippers. Now you, no, not that flipper. I've seen many of those. Uh -huh. Not that flipper. The flipper meaning flat against the body, flat on the hip, flat on the shoulder, flat on the face, no flippers. It looks contrived, it makes your pose, it will ruin your pose. The hands will ruin your pose if you do that flipper pose. So all you have to do to fix that is give the hand something to do. If you're gonna put it on the shoulder, squeeze, changes it. Put it on the hip, pull back, changes. It goes from a flipper, because you can't pull back this way, you have to grip and pull. Changes that pose to a moment. The hands, definite key. For women, soft fingers. That means if we are to grab a man's tie in a contrived pose, you will see her yanking this tie like he called her mama a name, okay? <laughs> soft, that means we bend the fingers. I know you guys have heard it before, ballet hands. I've heard it for years. It's just soft, everything is soft. You will see this a lot when brides are holding their bouquet because they are so stinking nervous that bouquet is screaming at you, help me, because they are gripping on this thing. <laughs> soft, soft hands. And we have to give the hands a purpose. How many times you've shot people and they're like, well, what do I do with my hands? All the time. I hate my picture taking because I never do my hands. Give the hands something to do. Grab the face, grab the lapel. Grab the pocket, stroke an arm, little things like that. Telltale signs for a pose versus a moment. Also, this is a huge one. I'm a people watcher, AKA a creeper, I am. So whenever I watch people, I love to watch them at the mall. My favorite place is the airport. I love watching people at the airport because I'm an emotion guy. And so I watch people come home. You can tell who's been in trouble, who's been doing trouble, and who's glad to be home. Whenever you watch people hug, that's a huge one. If people go up and they hug, and their hands are parallel, it's like, ah, yeah, nice to see you. The soldiers coming home, those are the guys I watch, the missionaries. The hugs they give are some of the most emotional embraces I've ever seen. And they all have one key element, the hands aren't even. They will hug like this. The reason we hug this way is to put more of us against more of them. Emotional cue. So whenever you're doing a hug pose, make sure those hands are uneven. Because if they're even, I'm gonna call you out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and if you ever hug me and pat my back, you better hope I'm not armed that day because you're gonna get it. <laughs> okay. All right, the eyes. Now, I touched this earlier. 
This is where I'm, I'm going from the borrow versus learn versus steal thing. How many times have we want to create this emotional embrace and we put their heads together and all of a sudden we say, close your eyes, and they go, there's nothing. Because to us, when we study photography, it looks like they're just closing their eyes. You have to give direction. Again, I'll go back to the missionaries when they come home. They will rarely hug whoever open-eyed. It is closed-eyed. Soldiers, when they hug their kids, closed-eyed hug. Why? There's emotion involved in that. And their eyes are usually looking somewhere when they're closed. They're not just a dead eye closed. You have to give the eyes direction. So to get a bride or a groom to close their eyes, I don't say close your eyes. I have somewhere to look. Come here. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna sit in the front veil. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna pay for it. Yeah, whatever. This is Leah. Hi. The second shooter. Okay. Hi. You nervous? I don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. These people don't know you. They're just judging you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I do with Leah, look this way. What if I want her to close her eyes, I'm not going to say, Leah, close your eyes. Close your eyes. All right, that's an inside joke. Anyway, um, <laughs> it, it doesn't look right. Look for it again. Leah, look at that chair right there. Now look at this light right here. Now look at it right here. Don't move your head. You sorry, suck. sorry. Okay. <laughs> look at the chair. Let's try it again. <laughs> okay, look at the chair. Okay. Look at the light. Now look right here. Now look at your knee. Now, with that, oh, you son of a... Okay. Come back. Okay, we're back. All right. So what that does to the eye is it gives the eye a place to look. It, it changes this contrived type of, we're trying to be sexy and romantic look. To a, a purpose. You can go sit down. Thank you. <laughs> so we must pose the eyes. Number one, must pose the eyes. Okay. Now, we have any couples in here? You guys are a couple, aren't you? But I'm not gonna pick on you. I'm not gonna pick on you. I'm not gonna pick on you. I want two people who absolutely do not know each other. Oh, and Sean, you're getting it later because you're the biggest guy in here. Okay. Who's here single? I'm so not hugging you. <laughs> come here. Yes. Trey, come here. Did people ever say you like Melissa Joan Hart? Oh my gosh. Yes. When I was little, yeah. Yes, you so do. Okay. Do you see it now? Y'all see it? What was it? Sabrina the Bad Witch, right? The Good Witch. Clarissa explains, Clarissa explains it, all. it all. That's right, that's right, that's right. You still look like her. Okay, so go ahead and face each other. She's not ugly. I didn't call you ugly. Hi. Okay, hi. So, the one that, the ultimate for creating awkward moments is find two people who don't know each other. Do you know your names? You know you Matt? She's cute, huh? Yeah. yeah. Say it! Yeah. All right, I'm just trying to make it more awkward. So anyway, what we're gonna do yeah. is we're gonna direct the eyes with these two a little bit. Come together. Okay. <laughs> I'll be using y'all later. Just so you know. This is just to demonstrate the eyes a little bit. Come a little closer. A little closer. Look at, don't look at me. Look at you. Okay. Is this awkward? Extremely awkward. Okay. So now, bring your forehead together. Do it. How awkward is that? I've had worse, actually. My kids have come up to me and said, Dad, Dad, Dad. And it's the most awkward thing ever. And I made this thing. And it's just so weird to look at him dead in the eye. Okay, so when we tell them, we do not say look at each other in the eyes because then you go cross-eyed. Guaranteed, 100% you go cross-eyed. So instead, you tell them to look at each other's lips. Uh, look at her lips. Look, look at his the lips. Forehead still? Yep. Okay. Okay. Awkward. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> I'll be using your eyes again. Okay, so what you, the difference you see because even when we are very familiar with someone, looking them dead in the eye is extremely awkward. And not only that, we'll start to go cross-eyed. So you direct the eyes, you tell them, look at each other's lips. What that does automatically is it closes the eyes a little bit. It gives a romantic shape to the eyes. And in this case, two people who do not know, absolutely know each other, I have my second shooter taking pictures of the laughs. Moments, right? 
And I'm making jokes and talking about creepers and how I'm going to arrest him and stuff like that. But it, it, it adds a sense of moment. And that's where you take those pictures. Okay. Another thing that must happen is the nose must cross lines. So imagine that your nose has a line, a plane that shoots right out of it. And you're hugging up with someone, and I will be using you two later. Don't go nowhere. Okay, you look at them dead in the eye. This is the awkward moment because your noses are, we don't do this. Nobody does this, except photographers make people do this. Look at each other, touch your noses together, and be natural. Okay, doesn't work. So what you have to do is you have to tell them to get their noses offline. You will have one person look down. Because what happens is, if you bring two people together and you put their noses together, put their foreheads together, someone is going to look off. That's our natural reaction as humans. We will look away. Unless you're plotting on somebody. And then you should not be that close to each other anyways. <laughs> but, as humans, one of us will look away. Why not use that? That takes your pose from contrived to a moment. Because, as humans, we recognize that. Because that is normal to us. Photographers screw the whole thing up. Okay. My style. This is a huge thing for me. I love love. I can't tell the guys in my unit that because they laugh at me. But I love love. That's why I'm a wedding photographer. My style reflects a strong sense of romance. To create romance in your pose, you must break the eye line from the camera. Period. If you now have a bride laying against the groom's chest and she looks at the camera, you now have an interrupted moment, correct? So if you want ultimate romance, you must break your eye from the camera, the subject's eye from the camera, period. Because we can only pay so much attention. And me and my ADHD, my attention pool is probably about right there. I only have so much to give. I can't look here, look here, and look here because now I'm partitioning my attention. If you have a bride and groom and all that attention is on each other, instant romance. Okay? So to create romance, you must break the eye line from the camera. That's why my style, you rarely see people looking at the camera. I take them, but I don't post them because I want to attract people that like that style. Okay. I promised I wouldn't put this up but I'm so gonna do it because she's not here. Okay, this is Brianna, y'all know her, some of you. When you look at that picture, what do you think? Anybody? Okay. Ha, you learned. What else? A need. What else do you see here? A lot of emotion. Why? She looks sad Okay. What else? What? Heat. What else do you see in this image? Comfort. Comfort. These two are absolute strangers. They've never met each other before. She's actually married. That's why I did. I put it up there. She's not here. And her husband's really, really, really mean guy. So, but anyway, what the whole point is? How many of you guys knew that? that they were complete strangers. You cheat, Sean, because you know us. Stop it. Okay. But all this does is tied everything in my photographic formula into one point. To absolute strangers. But through body language, light, and posing, we can fool anybody. This is how we communicate. Photographers, this is how we communicate. We don't get the choice of words. We have to use images. So the moment separates a pose from a moment. It's that contrived stand there, look at each other, smile, that we can change to a moment just through body language. One thing I have to do to add to that moment is I have them breathe. Whenever we're holding our breath, there's a natural tension. We can look at people and tell when they're holding their breath. Some of us can. That's tension. When we breathe in, for some reason, life just happens. So I'll have them breathe. Breathe in. What that does, through the mouth, it 
poses the mouth, parts the lips, creates a kiss moment. Okay. The squeeze it takes that flipper from a flipper to a grab. It takes that grab to a caress. When you're holding each other, instead of holding on the side, it now comes around the back. It's a squeeze. That's moment. Sometimes I'll have one of them whisper something to the other's ear, depending on what kind of shot I want. <laughs> if I want something soft and romantic, I'll whisper in her ear, tell him what you thought of him the first time you saw him. Sometimes that's funny, it really is. <laughs> but if I know the couple, and I know they're that type of couple, then I know what kind of response I get from that. That's when I have my second, or myself, I sit back and I wait until she gets to that moment where she's whispering in his ear, and then I take the shot. That takes our pose from a pose to a moment. That the moment is so important. If we forget the moment, it will look like a pose, guaranteed. So then I'll have sometimes act something out. Because I've already got them in the good light I wanted. I've got them in the location I wanted. I want them in the pose I've got them in. I've used the technique I want to use. So now all I want to do is I want them to act something out. I don't care if their faces are all scrunched up, whatever. It now creates that moment. So then if I tell, her, I tell him to her, whisper something so screwed up that, and if you let me hear it, I'm going to arrest you right now. And he'll start laughing, start laughing, and they start running around and not taking pictures. Take pictures, take pictures. Because I know I'm going to get that response. Or sometimes, if I'm really cool with the groom, I will tell him, I'm gonna take your wife out. And he'll say, like, what? And I get a picture, right? <laughs> I make sure on my 7200, so I'm way back here, right? Because <laughs> they can't get me. But I know what kind of response I'm gonna get, so I have them act something out. If you do not do this moment, you will look like a pose, guaranteed. I can pick poses out because they're missing the it. And that it is that last piece we're talking about. That it. People say all the time, Marvell, I don't know what it is about your imagery. You just have it. I'm like, no, I'm just a good liar. Honest truth. Because I can take two people who don't even know each other and make them look like they're meant for each other. Just through body language. And that ties in a lot of things we say. Looking at the, each other's lips, looking at you know, foreheads together. Again, that's a big one because when we don't like someone, we'll dip that forehead away. And you have them close. And if you look real close, I don't know if you can see here, his hand isn't a flipper. He's pulling her. And she's pulling on his tie. Soft. Not like he called her mama name, right? So what does all this translate into? It translates into our voice as photographers. Photographers communicate through light, shadow, and emotion in a wordless book. Uniqueness comes in art, in the art. We are, when, we, when our photography looks like art, we are photographing in poetry. When people look at our, our poses and they say, oh, they're getting married. Oh. They like each other. Remember, everything we do in a pose is a word. We are speaking in complete sentences when we're doing that. When people say, Vel, that picture, that, they look so into each other, then we know we are photographing in art. Art, if you photograph in art, you photograph in poetry, you will never be out of work, ever. Because people will approach you for your style, because only you can make that style. If I want to make a Big Mac, I go down the street, or I go down the street, or I go down the street, or I go down the street. But if I want a Tommy Burger, anybody from LA? <laughs> if I want a Tommy Burger, I got to go to LA. So I know I'm going to get a phone call. Say, Vel, can you come out to my, I'm shooting a wedding in Mexico. I need your style. Vel, I, I'm getting married on the beach in Hawaii. Can you come, shoot, come out here and shoot our wedding? Because we want you. No, we need you. That is the difference. If you photograph in your style, speak your language, speak your poetry, you will never be out of work, ever. The novelist has about 500 pages to tell his story. The poet has four lines. We only have four lines. So when we speak, we must pick every word to an exact. We can't say the dog ran down the street because he was hungry, because he wanted to eat that bone, and because that other dog was chasing him. We can't do that. We don't have luxury. We can only say, the dog was hungry. Simplicity. So, 
In this moment, I'm going to borrow my people, you. No, no, no. I'm going to save you. Okay. We're going to post some groups. I'm going to use some of the things I, I, I gave you guys today to see how you do. I'll put some very contrived poses out there, and you guys are going to fix them. And there'll be poses that we're going to like, oh, I've seen that. Okay? <laughs> so, I'm going to borrow two victims. Who knows my name? You know my name. You might be a victim. Yeah, okay. Oh, I know your name. You've been hiding from me all night. Yo, you know who I'm talking about. Come here. I need four ladies. Give me four, five ladies. One, two, three, four. Oh yeah, iPhone, come here. Oh, and you're all shorter than me, I like this. Well, you I'm might have to sit down. You. <laughs> okay, you get to be my bride. Come here. Okay, now when we pose, remember the things I've said. What do women hate the most? Looking bigger, right? <coughs> so we do not want women to look bigger. What's your name? Kelly. Kelly, come over here, Kelly. I'm gonna grab one of you, okay? That's okay. Wow. All right. Okay. This is the widest we'll ever see Kelly, right? She's our bride, right? We do not want her to look wide, correct? because she paid us a gob of money to make her look good. So the first thing we're gonna do with Kelly is what? Maybe where's the start? Where's the start? Feet. Feet. So what first we're gonna do? Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shift her weight off her feet because if this is, she looks wide right here. If we turn her, which someone said, we gotta put all of her weight on the back foot, correct? If we put on the front foot, the camera says, oh yeah, that's a black girl. Okay? <laughs> so, we put all the weight on the back foot. What that does is that poses her into an S. That the women, women look fantastic in S's. That S shape is very flowing, very feminine. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna put her in an S shape. So when we do that, we put her weight on her back foot, we kind of bend her, her back foot to a T, and we point her toe at the camera. Close. Okay iPhone, come here. I know your name, but your iPhone today. Come over here, Kelly. Kelly, come over here. Okay, you two, you two work together, don't you? That's right, come here, both of you. All right, and your name? Laura. Laura, come sit over here. Yeah. Right here, okay, because you're my bride. All right, now, I shoot on a wide angle lens when I shoot groups. I know it's bad. You shouldn't, but I don't care. All right, I shoot about 24 to 35 millimeters. That being said, I tell all the women that I am warning them I'm shooting a wide angle lens because what do wide angles do? They bend, right? So anybody on the edges, what does the camera do? You're in the fat spot, that's what I call it, okay? <laughs> you're in the fat spot, so you guys come on in. Okay, and it's kind of funny too, because I say, you're in the fat spot, and I'm like, no, I'm not, nigga, I fight on it's pretty funny, okay? But when I big group like families whatever I usually put the men on the edges because men don't care that they look bigger right women do so I tell all the ladies go to an S how much you paid attention okay yeah <laughs> good waiting back foot good all right slide in slide in what's really cool about women is they don't care about getting really close to each other guys we don't like to women do they don't care slide in okay so now that we know what the camera, the first thing the camera sees is gonna make bigger, right? So what's gonna make bigger right here on Kelly? Her hand. So we gotta give her hand something to do. How many times have you seen brides stand there like this? You trust me? Mm. Shouldn't, okay. <laughs> but they stand like this. And that arm is right there and I'm looking at this. So usually in sleeveless dresses, I'm like, kill that photographer. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so you have to give them something to do. What I usually do with women is I will have them create a story with these. Remember what creates stories? Okay, so I give the hand. So what I'll do is I'll have Rachel reach your hand through your hand. Through? No, other one, other hand. Okay, is that more awkward? Very Good, because I didn't want you to do that. <laughs> Run on the back. Run on the back here. No, no, the hand. Run the back. Okay. <laughs> I'm picking on you. You realize this, right? Okay. I make it hard for All right. You. So now what we don't want her arm to do is lay flat, right? Because if it lays flat, what happens? That camera sees that and it makes it wider. We have to get her hand off her body, so we have to give her hand something to do. Usually, if she's wearing a necklace, I'll have her grab it. Go ahead and grab your necklace. 
Okay, the one thing I will tell her most definitely is to pull that arm off her body. Not so much where it looks like she's shooting a rifle, but just more just so it's just barely off. Now what we've done essentially is we've now taken this large plane that the camera wants to see, we've shortened it down. Get, also, we get her hands something to do. If they're holding flowers, I do all kinds of things like that. Now what I'll have her do is I'll take that right hand, put it on your elbow on her shoulder. Elbow. Okay, because remember, that's creepy. <laughs> this is not creepy. Okay. Now, they're a little bit different heights, but you guys get the feeling of how good slide in. Bring your heads together. Okay. Sometimes, and I can pull this off, depends on how close the girls are, I can have her reach back and sometimes grab, no, hold, <laughs> slow down. <laughs> it's not that kind of party. <laughs> Jeez. I'll have her loop in somewhere in her dress around here, but make sure the elbow's bent. Okay? That's a little awkward. Just for, it, it's so awkward, but that's why I'm picking the girls first. Guys are later. Okay. I'm picking on y'all. I know who you are. Okay. Now, the star of this whole show is the bride, correct? She has to look the best. I do not care how hot her bridesmaids are. She has to look the best because when she gets her pictures back and she says, oh, those girls look better than me, that photographer sucks, right? So we have to make her look the absolute best. So if she is a larger bride, what can we do? Bear with me, okay? Don't hit me. All right, what we can do is we hide part of her body. Let's say she's really wide. We will hide her with the girl next to her. We have essentially now slimmed her down. But she's still the star of the show, right? So you have to look straight to camera. Okay? Lean your head in. Now take that back arm and loop it through her arm. All the way through. All, yes, no creepy, no creepy, okay? Come all the way through. And usually, usually she's holding flowers, right? So she's holding flowers on her hip. Maybe if we have flowers. And we don't care if the flowers look bigger because it also wants to do. It's hiding her hip. Okay? So she'll leap through and you'll slide in. Bring your arm through. Sometimes I'll even have my whole hands. Girls can do it. <laughs> guys, some guys can do it. Some guys can do it. Okay. And then what I'll have her do is I'll have her lean her head in. Fingers in her lap. I really don't care because that's, that's up to y'all. But I, actually, I don't like, I hate fingers are locked. It looks like tension. It looks like a bunch of spiders. And you know me, how I feel about spiders. So I'll have them grab here. Make sure you turn your hand. Okay. Wait on the back foot. Sorry, I'm just like touching, poking, like or whatever. Okay. It's, it's, or sometimes I'll have her bring her arm here, but never here, here, or up here, okay? All right, lean your head in. So then what I have everyone do is I have them all lean their heads in, you stay, and then I have them lean forward, slightly forward, slightly forward, like lean towards the camera. Way too much. That's so, it's way too much. Just, just a little teeny bit, because you know, if we lean all the way in, that's very 90s, we don't do that anymore. We just barely lean kind of forward. Because the camera now, the first, if imagine a plane's coming out of the camera, the first thing it's gonna do is smack our brides in the nose. If they're chesty, then it, it hits them there. Okay, you laugh, but it's the truth. I've never seen a woman complain about her looking shapely in a picture. Okay, so now what I'll do is I will either take a shot from here, because this tells a story. I'll take a shot here, that tells a story. Or I'll take this shot here, that tells a story. Or I'll take the whole thing. Now. At the same time, I'm being my own silly, stupid self. My second is taking little shots, little stories. So from this one pose, we have 10 different shots. Easy. And you don't have to sit there spending time going, oh, and the family's over there going, we want to eat. You know, you just, you just get this done, OK? You got to OK, my guys. I'm picking on Sean because you're the biggest dude in here. Come here. And I'm going to use you on purpose. Who else do I want to pick on? Come here. I'm saving you. You're my dessert, okay? Come here. All right. Oh, no, 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 no. Because that means I got to touch him. Come here, bro. Oh, yeah. Come here. See? See? This is the biggest guy in here. Isn't that? Whenever I roll. No. Where's Cody? Come here. Oh, excuse me. I feel like You're I'm in the start. huddle. <laughs> I sound like the, youth, the largest guy in the huddle. Okay, Jeremy, come here. See? Sucks to know me, huh? Okay, I need one more guy. Who should I pick? David Terry? Did you say David Terry? Oh, David Terry, come here. 
<laughs> okay. How many times have you guys shot groups of, of groomsmen and you see this? Tall dudes. Come here. <laughs> Short groom, right? You're taller than me. Right now, this guy's big old guns, too. Stay right here. You're right there. Okay. So if I'm a short guy that I am, and I'm trying to take this picture, I'm getting him perfectly, but I'm getting Cody's chest, I'm getting Jeremy's head, I'm getting all of Sean, who was affectionately in the fat spot, but it's okay. Glad you said it. Okay, so I love Sean. He's one of my best friends, just letting y'all know. Step back a little bit, guys. Okay, now, grooms men and men have only one thing they care about. Well, two things. <laughs> Sorry, it's the cop humor. Okay, um, <laughs> they don't want to look like women. Plain and simple. Men don't want to look like women most of the time. Now, in this case, if let's say Cody is the best man, Days, what are you, 5'9? Five, 5'10? Yeah. Five, five, five six nine. feet? Yeah, I'm 5'9. Okay, 5'9. Maybe. Because if I make you tall, I make me shorter, so you've got to be shorter. Okay, 5'9. Dave is 5'9. His best man is 6'6. Six, six. Six seven? <laughs> okay, so how do we shoot this? Because now Cody is emasculating Dave. True fact, is it not? We're keeping it all real here, right? Okay, he's emasculating Dave by his size. So what can we do to fix that? No, no. Because then that creates a whole different party. <laughs> and if you know groomsmen, when they start to drink, things start happening and no, 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 no. Never, never put a man on his knees for another man. Don't do it. Okay, slide back. Slide back. Okay, so what we can do is essentially we have to shrink Cody, right? Remember the first thing is men don't like to look like women. What do men like to look like? Say it. We can all say badasses. You talk county, right? Oh, no man. Badasses. Men look like badasses, and that's why I specialize in my groomsmen shots. Okay, so men are kind of opposite than women. They're angles. What defines a man? Shoulders, arms, sometimes his thighs, chest, all define a man. So we want the camera to see that and go boom, right? So at the same time, we want to use expression to make them look tough. So we've got to shrink you down. Take two steps back. Okay. Take one more step back. <laughs> Slide in. Sean, go to the back. Into the light? Everybody well. Okay. This will work. All right. We'll try this. I don't have much space, but we're going to try and make this happen. Okay. We have to make him shorter, right? Leave your front foot there. Take a big step back. Keep your front foot there. Take a big step back. Slide over. Slide over. Slide out. Okay. Dave, take one step back. We'll come up a little bit more. Take a bigger step, Cody. Huge, bigger step. Way bigger. Way bigger. Way bigger. Sean, do the same thing. Oh. Don't do that. Okay, stay like that. Okay. Cody, take one more step forward. Take a bigger step back now. Okay. Now, the difference between Dave and Cody now is like three inches versus six, seven versus five, nine. He is extremely uncomfortable, and I don't care. Okay? Honestly, I don't care. Same with him. These are both two big guys that I have brought down now. Dave is still a star of the show. So I can shoot this picture right here. And now everybody's in the frame. I had one groom, he was, how tall was Paul? He was shorter than me, 5'7", and his friend was 6'9". His best man was 6'9". And I'm looking at this going, you're going to eat him. And he tried. It was kind of funny. But but anyways, what we want to do is we want to take our groom and make him the baddest dude in the whole group. All these dudes will look like he runs that show. So what I do is I don't have him smile. And the only person I have to look at the camera is the groom. Because what happens is, as humans, when we look at photographs of people, we identify with faces. We look at faces. That's the first thing we want to do. So by essentially moving their vision off the camera, I'm lessening their visual mass. Make sense? Jeremy, look right there. Look, no, look right here. Sean, look right there. Cody, look right here. Dave, look right here. Okay. Harms, put your hand in your pocket. 
Now, hands in pockets with guys, they all want to do this. You have to have them leave a thumb out or put a thumb in. But if you cut them off and they're in dark suits, it looks like one body part, right? So you put the thumb out. Bring your elbow out to the limit, Cody. Actually, you know what? You got a tie on. Fix your tie. Sean, you got a watch? Look at it. You're going to look right here. And Dave looks right here. So essentially what we've done now is we've lessened all their visual mass and we've increased his. We've made them shorter. He's the broadest one in the image. He's up front so the camera sees him and makes him bigger. Now there's all different variations of this. But this is how I do my groomsmen, pretty much. And when they see it, groom only care about looking like badasses. Done. Okay? Thanks, guys. Oh, we don't get a hug? <laughs> oh. oh, my bad. I'm, I'm sorry, Pete. <laughs> okay. So essentially, that, I mean, this, this goes into tons of different things, but basically what we're doing is we're speaking different languages, okay? Now, couples. This is what I deal with mostly, are couples. Sorry, family photographers and... But it's all essentially the same. We don't make women look bigger, we don't make men look smaller. It's all pretty much the same. So I'll take my couples. <laughs> Wait for her. Should I pick a different girl? She's kind of cute, though. It's your show. It's my show? I like that answer. Okay, <laughs> come on in. Who are we gonna pick? Ah, I see you. Come here. Yes, you. Married. You're married? <laughs> Is your man here? Yeah, hey, you liar! <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> Make sure we have no mutual friends on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, no mutual friends on Facebook, right. Um, is he watching the show? Is he going to be watching this recording? Yeah, he's watching. So. You're such a liar. Okay. Come over here. Okay, now remember, I'm sorry. only you didn't get picked on because you got a camera. You got, didn't get picked on because you're holding a camera. You got lucky. Okay, so now, Let's go and just give these contrived poses that we see every day. You cool with doing this? Yeah. You better be. You cool? <laughs> I have to be. At least I'm picking, at least some girls I'm picking aren't like monsters, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're, right? They're decent looking, man. Okay, come here. Come over here. Okay. Okay, stand right here. Seriously, we're just acting now, okay? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. How many times have we seen this pose? Go ahead and your arms around her. Whoa, slow down, brother. <laughs> Needs. Needs a girlfriend. Needs a girlfriend. Okay. Slow. I guess that's the reason why. Slow down, son, right? Man, that's why you don't have one. Slow down, okay? Engineers, you know, we don't Jeez. have <laughs> they were, Yeah, they were on the same plane, right? But that was molester style. That was nothing about posing. Come on in, man. All right. Okay, bring your arms across. How many times have we seen this pose? Slow down, slow down, slow down. <laughs> Widen your stance a little bit. How many times have we seen this pose? What does the body language tell you? Choking. Choking. It's an attack, right? <laughs> More so than we really realize. <laughs> but this shows an attack, right? Look at what his hands are doing. Parallel, bring it in. Her, parent, her hands are natural, even though she's not. It sends a message that she's tugging to get away from the choking action. How many times have we seen this pose? Tons. Does it look contrived? Can we make it look real? Can we make this look real? Okay, tell me how to make this look real. Because I know we can. How can we make this look real? What do we got to fix? Remember those three keys that I will never change that will send a an emotion and an image. What are they? Okay, staggered arms. But we're saying things that, as far as 90 degree arms, don't no, go back. Sorry, you're going to be in this for a while. I know you ain't complaining. Yeah, okay, yeah. But, but the 90 degree arms is definite. That shows strength. That automatically tells us choke, right? We got to break that. Or, because sometimes I, I keep this in here if I want to use it. What can we do? Uneven. Okay, well, uneven arm. Well, I'm not going to have to do that. Just <laughs> <Okay. laughs> stay. But you're right. <laughs> Come on back, bro. <sighs> okay. There are three keys that I always have eyes, hands, and mouth. In this case, we'll change mouth for head. Okay? So how are we going to make this not look like an attack? Put maybe his hands on her shoulders as a 
But let's say we want to keep this. We want to keep this pose. But you're absolutely on the right track. How can we do this? He's attacking, right? She's fighting the attack. That's what her hands are saying. Their hands, he's saying, I'm going to get you. You've done this before. And her hands are saying, You never pulled me Stop. over. Oh, but I was coming. I'll be kicking in your door tonight. Okay. So what we have to do is change her hands to mirror what he's doing. Because right now she's fighting against him, right? What can we do? <coughs> say it. Someone say it. Put your hands over his. Go ahead, try that. Change it? Yeah, it's, better. it's better, but it still looks like an attack, right? Do you intertwine the hands? Kind of, the, whenever you fight, do you ever mix it up? Please. Okay. Right. okay, what we have to do is have her pretend she's welcoming this attack. <laughs> Honest truth. So what can we do? We have to move her hands from an attack position to an accept position. Go with it. Go with it. Get in there. Make a fist. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. What else can we do? You're on the right track, though. We're going to get the hands away from a, or a defensive position to an accepting position. Hmm? One of our hands down? Why not? Okay. Okay. Y'all are doing this. Go ahead. What else? Stay with it. Keep going. Who said that? Turn. T position. Okay. I'm huge, I know. I'm just kidding. I'm, just kidding. I'm gonna call you a man. Okay. So please don't tell who I am. Their heads, look how far apart their heads are. So what do you do? Look at each other. You can. Look at heads, each other. Bring your heads together. The forehead thing? Yeah, man. You... <laughs> okay. Okay, now. Okay. This doesn't work. Right? That doesn't work. So we got to fix that. Who said it? Someone said it earlier. You said it. What was your name? Alicia. Alicia. I'll never forget your name. Okay, we got to get these on parallel, right? So how we do it? I'm not going to help you. Okay. Say it. Say it. Do what? I'm just hearing super. Right? Yeah, right? Okay. You got to break that grip you've got there. Nine. Drop the shoulder down, this elbow down. And oh what did you say about this hand? That's <laughs> <laughs> You're messing me up! <laughs> okay. okay. So where do we want what? Go here. Here. Bring your heads together. I think so you want to keep the... whatever. I'm going to try to keep that. I'm helping people out. Time issue. Okay. Bring your head together. What are we doing wrong here? This is a, not a like black girl, right? Out. Yep, so he goes, do it back. So now, granted, we're not going to shoot all the whole body because this looks awkward here. But remember what we have here. Creepy hand, right? So we have to see the origin of the wrist. So if you're going to do this, you can either go here. Okay. But don't, don't do that. That's, that's, that's a tag. Okay. <laughs> that's so, a tag, and I will. Okay. <laughs> so now, bring your heads together. All right. We, we, yeah, you bring your head there. Here. Now, remember we have to break the nose line. So you go here. Oh, dude, you better not, okay? <laughs> I'm just letting you move them. <laughs> so I get in trouble? Yes. Okay, bring your hands together. Okay. So now what we'll have her do is look at the zipper here. Have him look at her lips. Breathe through your mouth. Okay, squeeze. Now that, that changes. That made me more Okay, but... You, you see the idea behind it. it is we have, you're recognizing the cue. Oh, where are you going? Come back. Come back. We're not done with you. Oh, you know what? Because you're all blessy. I'm not going to be coming to these anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can go sit down then. I'll, I'll use Jen. Okay. <laughs> Make sure you tag her. <laughs> Okay, so you see the idea what the body language sings to us. You're seeing it now. This is another classic one I see all the time. Go ahead and face each other. Come on in. I know Jen's got no shame, so this is all good. Okay. okay. What about me? You ain't got no shame. <laughs> we already seen your no shame. Okay. 
All right, step in. Okay, put your hand here, your arm, this hand here. Right here? Yep, right there, right there, right there. Okay, this hand there. How many times? No. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. Now, how many times have we seen this? Does it look posed? <laughs> What's that? I, I can't hear you. Gotta show the ring. Gotta show the ring? Well, in this case, what I would actually do is I'll actually put a ring on the right hand and then flip it on the computer. Okay, because light's number one. If the light is over here, I will do that every time versus over here. Okay? All right. So, how can we fix this? This looks totally contrived. Feet. Feet? Okay. What are we going to do feet? They need to put their weight on their back feet so they're more relaxed. Okay. Now, what's it going to do? Like, relax her hip down. What else? Something else you're missing? She needs to get closer. Sorry, Jen. Go ahead, Jen, move in. Go ahead, move in. I did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Weight on the back foot. What else? What do you do? Remember, we start from the top, bottom to the top. What else? What are we missing? We're at the top right now. We're going to start here at the bottom first and go up. Nope, they can stay. This is the pose. Nope. We can see just like this. Say it. Who said it? Honestly. Ah, I heard. Keep hearing it. Say it again. Say it. There it is. Bend his front knee. Because right now he looks like a soldier. How many times do we see groomsmen hold their wives like this? Lots. So all we have to do is bend that front knee just slightly. If he loves her, remember this how I remember. If he loves her, he'll point his knee at her. Just remember that. So you bend this knee and point it in just a little bit. Okay. Now, what that also does is that brings his shoulder down just a little bit for the camera angle. Okay, what's the hands telling us? Other than that Trey's a creeper. What's it telling us? High school dance. High school dance. True, but we're going to leave the hands just like that. Okay, we got to fix it, right? These are, we are shooting people who are normally not shot, so this is who we deal with every day, right? So let's fix it. What's his hand saying? He said it earlier. What's his hand saying? His hand is saying high school dance, isn't it? What's her stance, hand saying? High school dance, right? <laughs> okay, so what we have to do is we have to fix the hands. So we have to make his hand look like he not that likes her, because that's a complete sentence, that he loves her, that he needs her. He's got to grab her. Don't do it yet. I'm going to let you do it. Because I know you're good at grabbing. Okay? <laughs> so we're going to do, do that later. But, What's Jen's hand saying? What's, what's Jen's hand saying? Pushing him away. So his, her hand has to mirror what his hand is doing. His hand is saying, come here. Her hand has to say the same thing. So what do we do? Grip, grab his lapel. What else? Grab his tie. What else? Reach around the shoulder. What else? See? <laughs> no. But now... Now you guys are getting it, but, but that's absolutely correct. You guys are coming out with all these different things, and now you're speaking in poetry. Do you see what I'm saying? So we have a, like five different options we can do. We can say, grab his arm, squeeze his arm. Okay. Or, because now his hair, her hand is receiving, pulling in. We can say, what was your name, sir? Jason. Jason. Grab his face. Go ahead, grab his face. I'm sorry. Grab his face. Oh, what? Oh, sorry. Grab I was his face. Please drive me nuts. Okay, now that looks like a slap. You're so dead. The camera. Oh, is he, is he messing with you? Is iPhone messing with you? Uh, it's clips. Oh. <laughs> He's back there creating a lot okay. of uh, You're so okay. dead, though. But we are friends here. So, anyways, you can say grab the face. Jason said grab the face. Go ahead and grab his face. Grab his face, not pat his face. Okay, but we have the general idea. Now what we have to do is we're shoot, since we're shooting this way, we can't cover his face, right? So we have to come here, the back of his head. Okay. So we have the same thing here. He's pulling, she's pulling. But what do we run into a problem with, with that pose? The camera's going to go like this. Right? Mm -hmm. So we can't, sometimes we can't pull that off unless we blade him off. Okay, so we can say, in this case, we can go this way. Now what happens? Does he care about looking bigger? Nope. But then what we'll do with Jen, we'll have a pull in. Okay? <laughs> Step in. What's up, man? No. <laughs> All right. So then your hand will come here. Okay? This hand, this is my, I can't say it because you guys are dirty minded. 
I'll say this anyway. This is my money hand, okay? <laughs> so, this is the hand that's going to actually dictate this emotion. So I'll have him do multiple different things. <laughs> come on, y'all. <laughs> All right. So what I'll have him do with this hand is I'll have him come up through and sometimes tip her chin up. But <laughs> Trey looks like he just caught a bass. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, no. You gotta do a soft, okay, bro? Soft hands. <laughs> she's made a she made a crepe paper, right? So now what we're gonna do now is bring your heads together. No oh, man. No. <laughs> just, just come on down. Now what guys will do every time is they will bend right here. And they will immediately get double chin. So what we need to do is you need to straighten your spine down, bro. And you need to bend from here. Don't bend like this. Bend like this. Yes. Forehead down, chin out. Down. You're going to look up. Because he's pulling you up. Come in closer. Okay. Now, see how weird this looks with their eyes. They're like looking at each other and they're struggling. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, back in. Back in. Okay, come in a little closer, Jen. Give me your chin up. Now, look right here at his chin. Look at her lips. Breathe through your mouth. Breathe your, don't look at me, I didn't look forward. Okay, bring your forehead together, you gotta touch your forehead together. Bring your chin up just a little bit, a little bit more. Now look at his lips, look at her lips. Breathe through your mouth. Now, Trey, look right here at her temple. Actually, look at her chin. Okay. Jen, look at his lips. And then what we'll do is take that shot. Well, I had a moment in there. Obviously, I'm not going to do that because right. she's married, and I know her husband. He's a big guy, too. So, but anyways. She's going to get me killed. No, uh, I, I got your back, bro. Okay. I can take at least four rounds. <laughs> anyway, but you see the idea behind it. You can have a seat, bro. Right. What's that? Thank y'all. I appreciate it. See, it sucks to know me. It sucks to know me. Okay. But, but you get the idea. So now when you get home and you start to study this, this photography and you look at people's imagery, Find your own. You don't have to sit there and say, well, I'm going to put a hand here, put a hand here, and then look at the camera and take a picture. I already got somebody on that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm looking at you. Okay. But, but you, now, now when you look at images, do you see a difference? Is it something you always look for? What we do as photographers, we speak a poetry-type language. We can speak complete sentences, what everyone else does. And people understand us, but we want people to know us, know our work. It means nothing more to me. It means so much mean, means to me when someone says to me, Bill, I saw you post something. I knew it was your work right away. I don't care if it's good. I don't care if it's bad. It's the fact that they recognize me. That means the world to me. Because guess what? If they recognize me, some bride out there recognizes me. And let's say she lives on the East Coast and says, hey, I need that guy. I want that guy to shoot my wedding. I got to get him here. And people ask me all the time, how is it that you're always traveling to shoot weddings? There's only one me. So to get me, they have to come get me, right? So there should be only one Jason, one Trey, one David, one other David. Funny. Um, <laughs> but you get the idea behind it. Well, just a question. Now, for us tonight, you were right in front of me, right on top of me, right on top of me. You're posing. Do you do that? Is that what you do? Are you right in up front, posing, talking? Mm -hmm. I, I'm very, very hands-on. Um, one thing with me is when I meet a bride and groom, I want to be their best friend. I'm not there to be just the guy with the camera. If I become their best friend, let me back up a little bit. Nothing works better in photography than the referral. Nothing. If I have, let's say, Trey and I are real good friends. We are tonight, right? Okay. So, and someone says, uh, he's, getting, he's a photographer and my friend's getting married. And I say to my friend, hey, that dude, he's amazing. Love him. He does everything, he, he, we're such cool friends. They will take that word over a magazine rating, over an award, anything. So when I meet my bride and groom, that's my first thing. I want to be their best friend. So we laugh, we joke, we tell a lot of crazy jokes. We do a lot of, sometimes we hang out, it's weird. So when I get to the posing, it's normal. They're expecting me because they know I'm this kind of wild, crazy, all over the place guy. And I'm grabbing and moving them because the people we're shooting aren't professional models for the most part. When my business, they're not. So they don't know how to pose. So if I'm like, hey, come over, stand here, come do this, come over here, there's no big deal to them. And that's usually worked out before we've, I didn't even see my camera. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. 
I'm, I'm hands on, but I'm not. Okay. <laughs> All right. Is there any other questions? I love questions. Any other questions? Go. Um, OCF to me doesn't look natural. And I want everything to look natural. So a guy who is a natural person, I can spot OCF. When I use it, I try and blend it so much that if I don't recognize it, I know my client's not going to recognize it. Again, I love OCF, but not my work. Does that make sense? Some people are amazing. There's one. There's another one that just amazing at it. But it's not my thing. I mean, I'm all about shooting what I do. Time of day, I bounce light off reflectors, all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do to get around light. I can tell you, in every image you saw, not one flash was used. I, 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 how many times have I used my flash? Like, maybe twice this year? And that's on the reception? Yeah, I, I don't use it. There's ways around it. Anything else? Did that answer your question? Anybody else? Come on, people, I love questions. I'm already here sweating, you might as well give me more. No? Really hard for me? Babies. Oh, <laughs> babies. I can't do babies. And that includes babies that aren't cooked yet. Maternity. Can't do those either. Oh my gosh. I get friends calling me all the time, Mel, can you come do my maternity? I'm like, I'd rather eat a bag of spiders. I, I just can't do them. They, I, I'm horrible at it. it. It's not so much, I, I keep telling myself I can't do it. I can do it, but there's people out there who are much better. Let them do it. They're, that's their passion. My passion is weddings. You know, I mean, I, I, like I said, I've been a law enforcement officer for 17 years. I'd much rather run into a crack house and deal with a bridezilla. You know, I'd much rather get shot at than say someone, hey, can you pose me nude? Whoa. You know, I can't do it. That's hard for me. Anything that counts against my vision is hard for me. Does that, does that make sense? Uh, inverse square law. That's... Bull. Okay, that was hard too. Do <laughs> you know what that is? <coughs> Ask that guy. He'll tell you. <laughs> it's math. Brothers don't like math. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Go. What do you do with the couple that don't pose well? I mean, they don't feel comfortable with the way you're working with them. Okay, there's two things. <laughs> I shot the the. This is the best example I can give. Um, the head coach of Sweden's national hockey team. Okay, I shot his wedding. Swedes, bro. Okay, you feel me? They're like Germans, but a little bit nicer. Okay, they, they, no expression. And they're all hockey players, so they're all big. And I'm this little dude, and all they kept talking about how big my watch was, right? So I'm like, okay, how am I gonna do this? And so basically, I just talk to him, you know, and tell him, because most dudes do not want to look like women. So when I talk to them, I'm like, hey, this is what we're doing. I'll make you look kind of strong, this and that. Stand like that. You played hockey, right? Yeah, I played hockey. What place you play? Were you, were you, how many penalty minutes you got? By the way, the groom holds the record for penalty minutes. So I'm already like, okay. So anyway, I just talk to him. Relax him down. Because people will identify more with you as a person than your camera. Your camera is now just a tool. And, and once you take a, a picture of them that you think is decent, show them. And they'll be like, oh. You're not making me look like a woman. You're not making me look fat. You know what I'm saying? And so, then we'll, so now they take a couple that doesn't pose well. That's where my style actually prevails. Because now I know body language. I can just move them in position and make them look like complete strangers who love each other. Does that make sense? The problem you run into that is sometimes the couples aren't like that. And if you try and pose them like that, then they'll get their imagery back and like, that's not us. You're running that too. So just have to be up front with them beforehand. Does that make sense? I want to attract people that like my style, and they know I'm a high romantic style. If you want to come in and jump, if you want to come in and stand on each other's head, if you want to come and run down the street, I can do that. Not my style, though. But they know that ahead of time. So when the couples that, that don't quite um, pose well, honest truth, that comes down to the photographer. Honest truth. Because everybody can pose well. If you can pose a banana, you can pose a person. Seriously. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, did that answer your question? Yeah. All right. If you're not, you can email me and chat. I talk photography all day. So how do you handle brides that come in with like their Pinterest posing list? Oh like, my gosh, the Pinterest <laughs> brides. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I had a bride in Vernal. She's like, and she's a photographer herself. 
So that added on top of this. She says to me, Vel, I love your style. I love Pinterest. That's how they went together. I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> Pinterest. So I explained to him off the bat, again, that's grandma's pie. I can't cook grandma's pie. I can make an apple pie. It looks like grandma's. It might taste like dirt. But I can try it. If they're cool with that, then we'll proceed. I have people come to me, Vel, do you do select cover? color? Uh, select what? <laughs> I peel my fingers back and say, no, <laughs> I don't do it, I don't do it, <laughs> but, but, no, I don't get that rude, but, but seriously, what, what you can say is just like, I can try it, be honest with them, because if, if you do something so well, let's say you photograph babies super well, and they want you to shoot an engagement shoot, but you don't do weddings, if you're up front with them and say, I do not shoot engagements, I shoot babies, <laughs> then, <laughs> yeah, I thought, thank you. I, I shoot, because I, I have a cool job. Like, both my jobs let me shoot people. It's just weird. So, but when you, you tell them up front, when they get their imagery back, they'll recognize that's your skill level, but maybe it's not the vision that they had. Does that make sense? Now, I, I've run tell a lot, especially my friends. Vel, we want you to shoot our wedding. Vel, we want you to shoot our kids. We want to take pictures of our kids. We want to do all this stuff. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Matter of fact, I'm dealing with one friend right now. That's, he's, every day, he's up in my phone. He emails me, he texts me, he calls me. Vel, 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 Vel. So I say yes, because you're not getting around that. That's your friend. But at the same time, you want to keep him your friend. So when he gets image back and his kid looks like a goonie, <laughs> Okay, just let them know ahead of time. That's the way I get around it. And, 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 I have, and my friends are photographers, so why not refer one of them? We all could use money, we can all use work, we can all express our art. I'm not gonna be hoarding all the weddings that come into me. If a bride is a Pinterest bride and I know I can't meet that, I'll call Leah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's the way, be honest with people, seriously, because most of the times I've seen business deals go bad because somebody wasn't honest. I don't know my story. Okay. <laughs> so, the, how I got in photography, I'm, it's a long way, but I got to answer this question. Um, I got hurt on the job. I broke my back. And so I was off work for three months. And if you know me, I am not the guy that can sit in the chair. I start to vibrate, you know? Okay. So I couldn't just sit there, lay on my couch for three months while I healed. Um, and I always had this love of photography. So I said to myself, I'm going to learn photography. And people say, Vel, you're talented. I am not talented. I learn everything I do, I learn from a book, honest truth, and watching people. So as I got better, I would like take pictures from my couch. By the way, I used to shoot Canon. Sorry, y'all. I switched. <laughs> um, I used to shoot from my couch, like my entertainment center, my tree in my, in my house, my TV, just wild, weird stuff, bro. I mean, I just shoot it, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. And I always had this love for landscapes, which you can see is kind of that in my photography, a little bit of it. Of uh, the landscape element, but as I healed up, um, I started walking outside on crutches, and I would take pictures of rocks and trees and lakes and anything that didn't involve people because I hated people. Honest truth, <laughs> they smell weird. Anyway, um, so as I healed up and I started moving around more, my friends started noticing. Hey, Bell's got a nice camera. How many times have we heard this? <laughs> And I am a gadget guy. Oh, I, I have so many gadgets in my house and ramen in my refrigerator. I mean, seriously, I have just <laughs> gadgets and no food. My kids don't like it, but they do what I say when I tell them. Um, so as I healed up and I started taking pictures of these rocks and trees, people saw me. And a friend of mine came to me one day and said, hey, Bell, my brother's getting married. He's just getting out of the military where he shoots his wedding. And I am a perfectionist like no other. And so taking on that, he's military, and we kind of had a bond and stuff. I said, okay, I'll shoot the wedding. Shot it for free. And because we shoot for free, then we're, no, we're not liable for mistakes, right? So anyway, so I shot the wedding, and I, I studied my butt off, butt off. I mean, I studied everything I could about wedding photography. And then I shot his wedding. But before I even shot the wedding, my friend came to me and said, hey, we shoot the wedding. I said, I shoot rocks, I shoot trees, I shoot landscapes. I don't do weddings. So I dove into it, shot the wedding. From that one wedding, that one free wedding, all my weddings have come from. I can trace all of them back to that day. 
and it was a free wedding. They ended up paying me 200 bucks later because they loved the images so much. Please don't look at it. It's all select color. It's really bad. <laughs> but that's how I started out with landscapes. And on occasion when I'm not busy, I will go out there and I'll shoot landscapes. There are some talented landscape photographers. I will never bring up one of my landscapes because these guys make it look bad. I mean, they are so amazing. But that's why I get my joy. I go out there in the mountains and I shoot. So that's where, if I say anything, it's landscapes. And there's no people there, no one complaining. It's nice. <laughs> anything else? Other questions? Favorite color is cobalt blue. I like orcas. Uh, uh, I am a Virgo. I am a blue. What? Marketing. I don't market. Honest truth. Uh, what I do is, like I said, the most powerful tool in wedding photography or photography business is the referral. Good word spell spreads like the wind. Bad word spells, spells uh, sells like wildfire. Does it make sense? People get burned right and left. So what I try and do when I shoot a wedding, I try and, it's my friends. We become friends now. So I, as I'm shooting a wedding, I'm out there, I'm meeting this crazy dude, this crazy little black dude, taking pictures of everybody. And then I'm getting to know them because their friends now are my friends. So when they get married, they call me. Who is that guy? He, he did that funny thing with the photography thing. What's his name? Oh, well, yeah, here's another one. I shot 51 weddings last year. Yeah, no marketing, unless Facebook counts. It doesn't count. I just put them up there so people stop bugging me. Can we see images? Yeah, Facebook. But I don't market. Uh, maybe I'm an enigma, I don't know, but I, I'm the worst business guy ever. Don't ask me business questions. I will tell you bad stuff. Anybody else? Blog stomp? Yeah. Team up with me later, I'll tell you all about it. Right? It's probably because we don't have much time about blog stomp. It's a, don't, we'll talk later. <laughs> if you have questions, email me, whatever. I'll talk to you about blog stomp. Anything else? Okay, this is my information. <coughs> Can I play a video? What's that? Can I play a video? Sure. Okay, back to this one. Photography for me is passion. It is, next to my kids, it is everything for me. What I've noticed in this industry are the haters. People who don't like your style so they complain about it. People don't like what your gear you shoot so they complain about it. Remember, you're not shooting for those people. The moment you forget that, you will start hating photography. You'll quit. Shoot it because you love it. Shoot it because it's passion. I have no secrets. That's one of the first things I ever learned in this business. I have no secrets. I will tell you anything about what I do. And all that has done is help me love more what I do. So I think we all need kind of a pep talk about what we do. Those days suck. We're like, oh, I need to quit this business. I have them probably three times a week. <laughs> and what we need is a photography friend to say, you know what, you're all right. You're okay. Maybe you shoot a certain style that's not popular right now. If that's what you're shooting to make yourself smile, then keep shooting it. If it's shoot, you're shooting that to feed your kids, you might need to change a little bit, okay? <laughs> but I wanna show this video. I, I, I sent this. It's one of my favorite things. Well, let me play that little thing down there. Uh, we might have to play it right oh, Okay. This little kid made me laugh when I saw him. You guys have seen this? I love this kid. He reminds me of my, my little cousin. And not because he's just black, okay? Just because I'm not black. I think we all need a pep talk. The world needs you to stop being boring. Yeah, you. Boring is easy. Everybody can be boring, but you're gooder than that. Life is not a game, people. Life isn't a cereal either. Well, it is a cereal. And if life is a game, aren't we all on the same team? I mean, really, right? I'm on your team, be on my team. This is life, people. You got air coming through your nose. You got heartbeat. That means it's time to do something. A poem. Two roads diverged in the woods, and I took the road less traveled. It hurt, man! Really bad. Rocks, thorns, and glass. My pants broke. Wah! Not cool, Robert Frost. 
But what if they really were two paths? I want to be in the one that leads to awesome. It's like that dude Journey said, don't stop believing unless you dream stupid. Then you should get a better dream. I think that's how it goes. Get a better dream and keep going. Keep going, keep going, and keep going. Will Michael Jordan have quit? Well, he did quit. No, he retired. Yeah, that's right. He retired. But before that, in high school, what if he quit when he didn't make the team? He would have never made Space Jam. And I love Space Jam. What will be your Space Jam? What will you create will make the world awesome? Nothing if you keep sitting there. That's why I'm talking to you today. This is your time. This is my time. It's our time. We can make every day better for each other. But if we're all on the same team, let's start acting like it. We got work to do. We can cry about it or we can dance about it. We were made to be awesome. Let's get out there. I don't know everything, I'm just a kid. But I do know this. This is everybody's duty to give the world a reason to dance. So get to it. Create something that will make the world awesome. Play ball. I love that little guy. My biography, or biography, my biology teacher told me um, when I was in college, she said, be awake. And I didn't quite know what he meant by that, be awake. But he said, little kids are the most awake people on the planet. Everything they see, they love. A ball of lint, a leaf. My kid brings me stuff. He's like, Dad, look at this. I'm like, eh, what do you want to do with that? But it's the greatest thing in the world to him because he's awake. Everything is wonderful to him. Kid, little kids will fight, and 10 minutes later, they're best friends again. As we get older, we, we become asleep. We, we start to lose that vision, that childlike vision that the world is wonderful. As photographers, everything should be wonderful. Every person should be wonderful. Photoshop should be something that we shouldn't use. <laughs> but every person that comes to us is beautiful. That bridezilla, the overweight bride that's afraid of her shape, the perfect model bride that wants everything, the Pinterest bride, they're all perfect. You have to look at them as that. Sell yourself, sell your soul, sell your photography. You do wonderful. Thank you. Oh, oh I just. Oh, sorry. Let me Please add me on Facebook. I'm a Facebook stalker, creeper, whatever you want to call it. I love people. This is my email. If you have any questions for photography, email me anytime. I don't care if it's 3 in the morning. I sleep about 3 hours a night. No joke. <laughs> Seriously. My memory sucks because I don't sleep much. But I sleep about 3 hours a night. So if you email me, text me, Facebook me, I'll get back with you in like 5, 10 minutes. It might, not be, it might be gibberish, but I will get back with you. So that's my website. That's my Facebook website, that's my email. Thank you. <laughs>